Lamar Ismo back with another video. It's time for Wednesday view. I'm going to try to uh, upload uh, as many videos as possible uh, every Wednesday or as my um, work schedule allows me to do so. I'm not uh, corporate funded. I'm not uh, funded by any sponsors. <laughs> and um, I'm also not funded by uh, donations from lemmings like some <laughs> you know like i said I'm, I'm looking for quality not quantity when it comes to this audience because uh, in hopes that we are able to have uh, legitimate uh, academic discussions and come up with uh, possible solutions for the problems we're facing because uh, the hour is getting later and later as the saying goes but this uh this will be partially impromptu and uh partially uh, organized because i've uh read and seen a lot of material over the past uh, week or more and um you know hopefully uh i can remember everything that has to be uh, extemporaneous so with that uh, mouthful of an introduction out of the way let's get into uh what's going on in the world we have once again, everyone's favorite uh, whipping boy in the alternative media, or at least, uh, and, and this is sad, but it's, it's unfortunate, sad, but true that most of the alternative media is right wing, and they still have not learned to stop playing the uh, Patriot games. There's a channel that I stumbled upon called, uh, what is it, uh, Enigma Report? Well, he, he does a decent job, but... Um, He's an Australian, apparently, of, um, I think he has an Assyrian flag, so I'm going to assume he's of Assyrian descent. But this guy actually has the nerve to say that the uh, South was, and this has been a myth, and this is why it's, it's so dangerous that the uh, alternative right is the most popular alternative media space uh, in cyberspace, because you get these, uh, these silly notions of uh, racial supremacy and it doesn't have to be always from Europeans. It could be from other groups. So you get racial supremacists. You get uh, silly nationalists. And as we all know, anybody familiar with this channel, uh, nationalism is not a good thing. Uh, populism actually is legitimate. Populism is actually good. And, um, you know, this guy says that. But uh, back to the uh, main topic at hand, the whipping boy of the alternative media, uh, Venezuela. And we know, and, and now it's been confirmed for me because, as always, I was watching the uh, Israeli news because they're a lot more honest with their own people than they are with us. Uh, you know, same thing, Netanyahu is a lot more um, uh, vicious in his speech when if you watch uh, Israeli media coverage of his sayings because he, he speaks in Hebrew and they translate it and you get to hear the uh, genocidal warmongering uh, at its finest. But Venezuela is, is under attack and uh, the tribe, and this is how I know, and, and, I, and I knew I was right in the first place because, as always, I'm committed to justice and I'm committed to self-determination uh, for nation states uh, when it's appropriate, but, but mostly for individuals and ethnic groups. I think the world would get along a lot better if um, the people actually had the power, and by that I mean if uh, governments were more localized and the uh, actual uh, population in a, in, in a given area had control of their resources and uh, how they set up their system. And uh, I could be wrong, but uh, what we have going now is not uh, very desirable. Another thing that's the, that I said has been confirmed is the rich is, are, uh, are continuing to get grossly richer. The uh, top 26 individuals now have more wealth than 3.8 billion. So if they keep it up, they'll have more money than more than half of the global population. But the uh, alt-right won't care about that. They're fans of capitalism. And if you're familiar with my channel, you would know I've given a uh, little evidence, but I'll continue to give further evidence to confirm that just like with the uh, Marxist communism, the tribe also benefits from and controls capitalism uh, to uh, everyone else's detriment, to everyone else's enslavement, you know. 
uh, Mikhail Bakunin hit the nail on the head when he said capitalism and, and uh, Marxist socialism will get you the same results. One will get you enslaved by private interests, by private banks and corporations, and the other will get you enslaved by a totalitarian and brutal government. But I knew Venezuela was on the right track because um, it, when I was in uh, high school, uh, I graduated in 02, and um, there was a lot of talk about Hugo Chavez then. And right when, this is how I would say, people like to talk about being woke. I, I've been woke since uh, the late 90s, early 2000s. But um, the um, United States government tried to pull off a coup against Hugo Chavez. But here's how great this man was. The military personnel who actually launched a coup on him, he was able to convince the soldiers that were actually there to guard him to free him because he was working on their behalf. He was working on behalf of the Venezuelan people. And guess what? That had to have been true because every step of the way he was fought by the United States. And um, for you people that are new to a uh, legitimate alternative media, there are no good guys when it comes to the major powers, the uh, United States government, the Russian government, Western Europe, uh, and, and all their vassals, because that's the real government in China, to uh, more or less they shake hands under the table and um, to some, they, they agree on a lot of stuff. And, and really what they do is they pit their populations, especially in the case of the West, they pit the populations against other people to either subjugate uh, and slash or steal their resources because uh, sometimes that goes hand in hand. You subjugate a population. So you do have your outliers and they always get hammered the hardest. Zimbabwe is another example. Robert Mugabe is looking a lot um, uh, better now because, you know, uh, if you're a third world country, what would make more sense to allow your resources to continue to be taken uh, at the detriment of your people for the benefit of a few, a very small minority. And I have a Carol Quigley quote that I'm going to share later on on this Wednesday view to confirm this. But this has been this has also been going on for quite a while um, in, in the 1800s. And, and I'll give you a direct quote later. Uh, and, and by the way, today's date is the 23rd of January 2019. But the long and short of it is that uh, Quigley said that the Japanese government, the Me I believe he referred to it as the Meiji or the Meiji government, um, which pretty much made the emperor into a figurehead. They were actually in charge that the West actually installed that government to get pretty, essentially to get what they wanted out of Japan. So the same thing has been going on and still goes on. I mean, just look at the Al Saud crime family. Mike Pompeo on his uh, silly and um, uh, hypocritical and disgusting Middle East tour actually had the nerve to say that um, Iran should be more like Saudi Arabia. Let's let that marinate. Let's let let it let it sink in. Iran should be more like Saudi Arabia. Along with the Zionist state of Israel, Saudi Arabia gave us 9/11. They, in fact, they've given us most of the terrorism because most terrorists uh, are from the school of Salafism. They are Salafi, Wahhabi Muslims. They're not um, even part of the majority sect. They're outliers for the majority sect of Muslims. The largest denomination of Muslims have um, no, they have a quasi affiliation with the brand of Islam that Saudi Arabia has been promoting with their petrodollars. So ideologically, Saudi Arabia fuels terrorism. And let's look at what they do at home. They crucify people. They crucify people after they've already been beheaded. They reattach the head to the body and display it uh, crucified. They uh, amputate limbs. Uh, they just allowed uh, last year for women to drive. But um, the uh, trick to that is women still need male guardians to go anywhere and do anything. They need male guardian approval for anything. And uh, while we're on that subject, this Rahaf Muhammad uh, woman is quite the um, spectacle. But she's a liar and a um, 
you know, she's, but what can you expect from a woman coming from such a depraved and uh, hypocritical and unjust society? We have our problems here in the United States, but uh, thank God that we're, we're not, we're nowhere near the, um, the disgusting levels of um, the Salafi uh, Gulf state, Persian Gulf state monarchies. They're the, probably the worst places to live. Um, well, if you like being a um, a well kept subject, I guess maybe not. There actually there are worse places to live. I, let me re, let me take that back because some people have similar governments, and they get way less handouts and way less. Um, they 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 basically get way less um, scraps from the table. But um, Saudi Arabia, you know, no one in their right mind would want their country or anybody else's country to be like that. But Mike Pompeo isn't in his right mind because he's a Zionist Christian. And um, there is another um, it should be an oxymoron to say that. And uh, but it's not. And uh, they're, the, they're some of the biggest hypocrites uh, in the world. Also, uh, <laughs> they the you know, the exact opposite of the golden rule is what they uh, propagate in the world. They don't do unto others as they would have done to themselves. They cherry pick scripture. They make up things and they support evil because they think the Lord, they think Jesus is going to come back because they're they're propping up uh, brutal racist monarchies in in the in the Arabian Peninsula and also a racist regime in uh, the uh, territory formerly known as Palestine. They support a brutal and racist regime. A regime, by the way, that um, attacks the the, the neighboring states that don't uh, prostrate and sell out to them. Israel would, I mean, excuse me, Egypt would receive the same treatment as Syria if they um, were resistant to Israel. But we know that um, Israel pulls their strings as well as Jordan. And then we all know now also they've been pulling Saudi Arabia's strings for quite some time. And uh, the Al Saud crime family has been in cahoots with them. And now it's becoming more and more apparent and the relationship is uh, seeing more of the light of day. The um, United Arab Principalities, also known as the uh, UAE, another uh, gutter, uh, disgusting, warmongering, hypocritical country, uh, actually um, hosted some uh, top-level Israeli war criminals on a visit to their country. Mind you, um, you know they supposedly um, not, they're not supposed to allow uh, Judaics in their territory if they follow their own ideology. But we were talking about hypocrites here. So um, this is the first part of Wednesday View. I will see you shortly in a few minutes. Thanks for watching. God willing, see you in the next video.